Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Um, if you have not seen any of my past videos or any of my content whatsoever, my name is Melanie. I do lifestyle career focused content and today's video is going to be a sit down video. I'm trying to incorporate more sit down videos into my channel because I feel like you guys relate to them more and I feel like it's a better way for us to have conversations, for you guys to ask questions. And so with that being said, if anything is mentioned, or not mentioned in this video that you have questions about, feel free to leave those questions down in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. But for today, today's topic, we are gonna be talking about corporate burnout and what that looks like and how to identify corporate burnout, how to remedy corporate burnout and maybe what you know corporate burnout versus just like not liking your job or maybe knowing when it's time to move on from a job also go ahead and click that subscribe button and that bell notification so you don't miss any of my future content so just a little disclaimer that i'm currently filming at night um, unfortunately i didn't get to take advantage of um, the daylight lighting in this apartment because um, it's after work i had to work today okay so originally what kind of inspired me to make this video was uh, I actually went through quite a bit of spouts and episodes of corporate burnout when I first started working professionally after my undergrad degree was completed. And then I also just experienced it probably two to three months ago in the current job that I'm in right now. And when I say corporate burnout, that doesn't mean like that I absolutely hate my job. That basically I'm, that is basically just saying like, hey, I've been overworking myself and I'm not having enough balance. Also, as we film, if the lighting changes, it's because the sun's going down. I'm trying to control it as much as possible. So just bear with me. So corporate burnout is a special type of work-related stress, a state of physical or emotional exhaustion that also involves a sense of reduced accomplishment and loss of personal identity. So basically, you know, a lot of our lives are if you do work a corporate nine to five a lot of our week is spent at work we get two days off right saturday sunday but from monday to friday usually we are in the office from nine to five or whatever your schedule is eight to five eight to four um that's more than half of your day and then you come home and basically have three hours before it's time to go to bed and then do the same thing over again so there are some contributing factors that i have found from my experience another disclaimer is the things i'm discussing in today's video are mere personal experience maybe you've experienced corporate burnout in the past and it's manifested differently this is just how mine is manifested and kind of how I try to remedy my corporate burnout so I can get back to feeling like my normal self so I actually put some notes in my phone um, from kind of how I felt when I was going through corporate burnout and kind of how what I did exactly to remedy feeling that way so i could get back to my normal day-to-day -day life and actually you know perform in my job and then come home and be you know good to my friends and my family basically the first thing is to identify whether you are actually experiencing corporate burnout or if it's just that maybe you just don't like your job or you hate the career field that you're in i know when i was working in accounting um i experienced corporate burnout but i also started to really hate my job so it was really at the end of that um of working for that company in particular it was really hard for me to kind of determine whether i was feeling burnt out or i just really didn't like my job and i came to the conclusion that i really just didn't like my job and i was experiencing things like um headaches i didn't feel like getting out of bed in the morning i had a massive amount of anxiety which you know you can get anxiety when you have corporate burnout too but also like when you hate your job so eventually i ended up leaving that job and got a new job but that was one of the things that i kind of noticed first was the i had a lot of anxiety at work speaking of leaving accounting and going into finance i also have another video that i think i made about a year ago i'm gonna put the link of it up here just in case you're interested in checking that out um kind of explaining why i left my previous job the video just kind of goes into more detail of like what it was like for me working in accounting and kind of like when i knew it was time to go like the cer certain things that helped me identify like what a toxic environment was like and when I kind of chose to leave and go to a different company. Um, back to the backstory of kind of what inspired me to make this video. I actually, like I mentioned earlier in this video, I had had a little episode of corporate burnout probably like two or three months ago, right before the holidays. 
Um, I work as a little bit of background. I work in financial analysis. So if you're familiar with the job and the job description and what that job entails, uh, part of the year you have to do budget season. So basically for me, what that looks like is I have um, business units. I'll just describe them as business units. So I don't want to go into too much detail about like what my job is just for confidentiality purposes, but basically I have to put together, I have to lead and head um, the next year's budget and basically meet with a bunch of departments and department heads and get information and get KPIs that are applicable to that budget. And then we put it all together into a big budget deck and we basically, you know, present it to the C-suite exec level and then eventually gets presented to the board for approval. And that takes up about three to four months of my year. And although it's not like a very long time, it is a very stressful time and it takes a lot of like mental endurance to get through it. And I think that this past year was like my first real experience in budget in budgeting where i really headed a lot i took lead on a lot and i think it really took a mental toll on me because um although i really love my job and i love my team and what i do i think to a certain extent like you need to make time and balance you know certain things for yourself i don't know if that makes sense but you can love your job and also experience burnout so some of the things that I started to kind of like symptoms of corporate burnout that I started to kind of experience was A, I was extremely tired. B, I was getting very, very anxious um, when I usually never get anxious in this job like ever. So I was getting very anxious, which was really odd and peculiar to me. Uh, the third thing that I noticed was a lack of interest in wanting to do like the things that I love to do, like working out and hanging out with my friends and being social. Like I wouldn't want to go out on the weekends or do anything. And that was another thing I noticed. The last thing I noticed that was like really adamant in the situation was making a lot of mistakes at work. Like I was making so, so many mistakes at work and I would try so hard not to make mistakes and I would just keep making like you know, silly small mistakes that I usually wouldn't make in other circumstances, if that makes sense. So now that I have kind of explained like kind of how I felt when I felt burnt out, I'm gonna explain some of the things like when I start to sense that I'm feeling burnt out, like what exactly like what I do to combat that. So I can get back to my normal day-to-day -day life, working my nine to five and enjoying my free time and my life with my friends and family. So. Personally, I feel as though when you start to feel like you're getting those feelings of anxiety or maybe you're making a little mistakes at work that you shouldn't be making, I would suggest looking at how much PTO you have. I know a lot of people like to keep their PTO depending on if you have an accrual system where you accrue it during the year or you get all your PTO up front at the beginning of the year or you have unlimited PTO. Look at your PTO options and see if you can take like a couple of days off or like a couple of Fridays off here and there. Sometimes having just like four day weeks where you only have to work for four days and then you have a longer weekend, sometimes that helps and sometimes it doesn't help, but it's worth the try. I noticed that when I only have to work a four day week and I take like a Friday or a Monday off, I feel a lot more motivated to like get all my work done and I don't feel as stressed out. But the caveat to this is that when you take PTO, you are not allowed to check your email. <laughs> I'm guilty of this. I have friends that are guilty of this. Checking your email while you are on PTO is so extremely counterproductive to taking PTO. Like you might as well just not take PTO at that point if you're gonna be checking and replying to emails. I understand that like people at certain job levels have to do that, but if you're like an entry level, trust me, like, you can wait, they can wait until you come back from PTO. I'm sorry, I just, unless like the company and the corporation is burning to the ground, they can wait until you come back from vacation. <laughs> okay, so first thing is check to see if you have enough PTO to take, and if you do, um, maybe try to take a couple days, like even like a Friday to Monday, get a four day weekend, and then have you know two four day weeks. Sometimes that helps. Helps it also. It really helps me knowing that I only have four days to work instead of five. Like I think it's like a mental thing, but definitely consider that if you are starting to have those feelings of corporate burnout. Second thing, do something each day for yourself before logging on or going and commuting to work. This was a game changer for me. 
I am usually not someone who likes to get up in the morning and I am by no means perfect about getting up every morning before I log on to work, but I do make sure that I do at least one thing for myself in the morning, early in the morning before I go to work, whether that is skincare or journaling or doing some kind of self care, cooking yourself a healthy, nutritious breakfast, uh, going to a workout class. I personally enjoy going to work out first thing in the morning before I wake up. I feel like I have accomplished something. I come home, I can shower and go to work. And when I come home at night, this is the best part. When I come home at night, I don't have to worry about getting my workout in because I've already gotten my workout in that morning. The next tip I will say is usually when you are feeling burnt out, more than not, you have been overworked or maybe you have a lot on your plate at work and that's why you make all those little mistakes because you're trying to get through work as quickly as possible um, or you have deadlines to meet. And to this, I will say to assess um, if your work is being fairly distributed between you and your cohort or your coworkers at work. A lot of times I find that leaders are so busy into the details, they have to review work, they have to do you know higher level stuff that they don't recognize when they are unfairly you know delegating work to certain employees. And it's definitely happened to me. I've seen it happen before where, where like a manager will give a bunch of work to one employee and then you have employee B over here who like doesn't really have a lot of going on, which also isn't good because you get really bored. Um, so definitely just kind of like talking to your coworkers um, about that to see like if they are as busy as you are, maybe they are as busy as you are and then that's just like the job. But sometimes more than not, you'll find that work can be, you know, unevenly delegated to certain team members. And sometimes someone's caring in the team while someone else is not, is kind of slacking and not doing, you know, their share of the pool. Okay. Then the next tip is going to be to make plans during the week with either your friends or your family. Um, this is a really, really good tip. I like this tip a lot because I feel like a lot of us overlook <sighs> fire truck. Okay. Next thing that I wrote down here was to try and look and discover new hobbies you may be interested in. So anything that maybe you haven't tried before, like maybe you've never tried yoga and you want to try yoga or you want to try pottery or painting or do like a, a wine and painting type of night with your friends. Um, maybe just finding like a hobby that maybe you don't monetize off of or you can't like monetarily get compensated for, but you just truly enjoy. Um, I find that finding stuff like that to do is really helpful because you kind of find your purpose in life through those things. Like you don't just completely base your purpose off your job. You're finding like a hobby. Like I know a lot of people at work do like intramural sports after work. Usually a lot of, I don't know Charlotte, ha I'm sure Charlotte has intramural teams. I actually know Charlotte has intramural like volleyball teams and stuff. So a bunch of people like you don't even have to know your team. Like you could just sign up with like some friends and if they have friends at work, they can come sign up and you guys can like form a whole intramural team. So finding different hobbies like that to do, or if you are a bookworm and you wanna get into a book club, basically anything, it doesn't even have to be something that you can like monetize off of if you enjoy making content on YouTube. I personally enjoy making content and editing and uploading to YouTube. That's my hobby. I don't monetize off it as of right now, but hopefully in the future, maybe I'll monetize, but I just truly enjoy the art of creating content for you guys and you know, taking stuff that I've experienced in my life and helping other people who are maybe younger, more impressionable, that may need that guidance. Um, that's what's always, you know, brings me happiness. Okay, and my last tip for this video is going to be making sure you're getting enough sleep, daily movement, and eating the right foods. Getting enough sleep during the week is actually a really big one for me. I have trouble doing this and I have been trying different stuff like not having screen time 30 minutes before bed. It doesn't always work because I like to watch TV before bed. Some nights I'm actually more tired than other nights and on those nights where I'm not as tired, sometimes I'll listen to like lo-fi music or you can get like, um, I'll turn like rain sounds on, on my Google home, um, or your, I don't want to say the name, but A L E X A. If you want to turn noises on for that. I know like if you're experiencing a lot of anxiety, it also is very hard. I experience a ton of anxiety 
it's hard for me to fall asleep a lot a lot of the times but just finding stuff that works for you and then the other part of this is making sure you're eating enough and you're getting the right nutrients in your body i notice when i eat healthier more fibrous meals i feel a lot better um i know it's really really easy to just want to order in food especially when you're feeling like really down and out um it makes life a little bit easier i can definitely relate to that um but i find like when i eat more healthier meals more fulfilling meals i feel a lot better overall and then lastly making sure you get your daily movement in whether it's just walking i really love walking i think walking is a great form of exercise i think it's really um, people underestimate it and I think it you know taking a simple walk down the street or you know taking you know if you're a big walker you can do a couple miles I think it can really turn your mood around during the day even if that means getting up like an extra 20 minutes early every day every morning before you go into work if you don't if you're not hybrid or you don't work from home getting up a little bit earlier every day to take a really quick walk outside maybe you're you have a dog and you want to take your dog for a walk simple things like this can you know you don't think they're going to alter your day but in reality they really do i can't i can't explain to you how many times i've been like a walk is literally not going to change my mood of course i take a walk with my dog sergeant and i come back and i'm like wow i'm really happy that I took that walk because I feel so much more energized. Okay guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been waiting and I've been anticipating making this video for a while and I'm happy I'm finally getting around to it. And I promise to have more sit down videos in the future that are more career focused. I know you guys really like that kind of content, but if you guys enjoyed this type of content, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click that bell notification so you don't miss any more future content. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.